Hi everybody, I'm Mark Collier with the OpenStack Foundation and I wanted to show you OpenStack Havana today really focusing in on a couple of the new services that have been added. So I'm not going to go over some of the stuff I've, I've uh, shown you in the past with Grizzly and other releases. Uh, you can certainly go back and look at those videos, but I thought you'd mostly want to hear about what's new, uh, particularly around these two services. Now those services are OpenStack Orchestration and OpenStack Metering. And along the way I'll point out a few other um, nice improvements, but I'm really going to focus in on those for this video. So uh, one of the things we've done is actually improved uh, the, the display up here of the resources utilization. So right now, of course, I'm not using any resources. I haven't kicked off any orchestration or uh, started any instances. But uh, as we do that, you'll see that change. So I'm going to go ahead and dive straight in here to orchestration. So this is here on the project tab, which is the view that most end users will have. And you'll see orchestration and then stacks. So the stacks are really these templates uh, in the OpenStack orchestration system. Um, it's also known as HEAT, that's the code name, so you may hear the term HEAT from time to time. Um, but OpenStack orchestration is what you'll see here in the dashboard. So the first thing you need to understand about this is that it's a template system, template-driven system, and that really helps you automate uh, a lot of the complex deployments. So in this particular case, I'm going to use this template that was uh, up on GitHub. There's quite a few up there. And this one is designed to launch a couple of servers uh, to power a WordPress site. So pretty common. Uh, WordPress powers a lot of the web. And uh, so here we are utilizing the OpenStack orchestration system to, uh, to go ahead and launch this. And so this will be my WordPress stack. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and click rollback on failure. So if there's a problem, it'll roll back automatically for me. So that's really nice. Set a password and then, of course, uh, set the key for uh, for the uh, keystone. So I'm going to go ahead and launch this stack and you'll see here in a few minutes um, we'll have created these two instances. Now one of them is for the database and the other is for the the front end of the application. So pretty common um, and over time uh, of course you may grow to much bigger deployments. I'm running this here on my laptop so uh, I've created a uh, this cloud with DevStack, which is something uh, many of you may be familiar with. It's quite a popular way to create a small cloud to kind of kick the tires and, and see what it's what's like and do some testing. So in this particular case, I'm only going to create a couple of smaller instances, and uh, you'll start to see those showing up here on the Instance tab. So now we've actually got both of these instances running, and it says WordPress stack, so it tells you which stack it is, along with uh, the fact that this is the web server and this is the database server, and that was all set up in that template, including uh, the type of image that we were using, which in this case is a Fedora 17, and the type of uh, size was configured there when we when we kicked that off. And if I go back into the stacks uh, view under orchestration, I can actually see visually what my servers uh, are doing here. So um, of course, small deployment. Um, this will be even more useful when you have um, hundreds of servers and you can see visually how they're uh, been deployed here by the orchestration system. Um, and as you look at the overview to get more details on what you've deployed and the resources, again, this becomes you know, even more useful as you have bigger deployments, but you can see the database server and the web server that we created, and you can see the status. Um, the events, again, um, are going to be pretty self-explanatory here. We uh, recorded an event that there was an, uh, kicked off a process to create the server, and then when it was complete, that was recorded here. So that kind of gives you a little sense for what the orchestration, uh, OpenStack orchestration system is all about. Um, one of the new things that's available in OpenStack Havana uh, is actually the ability to resize your instance. So I'll go ahead and show you that um, as we go along here. So I'm going to make this instance a little bit bigger. So going from a small to a medium size um, flavor, flavors are of course um, the, the configurations of memory and, and, uh, and disk that you set up uh, for your users in the admin view so they can uh, figure out uh, what the flavors are they can choose from. So we're going to make that a little bit bigger. Um, let's assume, for example, that our database server is just really getting hammered right now and we, we find out that that is a, a, an area that we need uh, to add more resource to so we, we, we are able to resize it here in real time. So while that's happening, I'll go ahead and show you the other big news here in Havana which is uh, the OpenStack metering service. So that's going to be um, shown here uh, in the admin tab, which is really where the operators live, as opposed to the end users. 
And right here under the resource usage tab, that's where you're going to look. And we'll see here that uh, I don't have a lot of resources um, that I'm using because, again, we just spun up a couple of, of instances here on this small cloud. But it does give you a view into all this type of, of data. So the disk, um, you know, networking, object storage, usage. And this becomes really useful for both public and private cloud scenarios. So in a public cloud, of course, you want to know what your users, i.e. your customers, are doing so you can charge them appropriately. And all this data is being collected and reported back. And we're just seeing, of course, the dashboard view into it. Um, but a lot's going on behind the scenes, and that data is available through APIs. You can plug it into uh, other types of monitoring systems. You can actually plug it into the OpenStack orchestration engine to uh, provide auto scaling, for example. So you may have a metering, uh, OpenStack metering um, alarm that can tell you, okay, this server is, is getting uh, overutilized. Um, why don't you go ahead and, and spin up more web servers um, on the front end? And so you can. You can work those two new capabilities in tandem to actually provide auto scaling. So, you know, as applications are becoming more cloud aware, OpenStack is becoming more application aware. So, I think that's pretty cool, and that gives you a little sense for what's happening here from the resource perspective uh, in the OpenStack metering. Now, if I go back here to my projects tab, let's take a look at this instance that I was resizing and see how it, how it's going. So, the last step here when it's just about done is it wants to ask you to confirm that you're sure you want to do this and I said yes and boom it's done so that gives you a little bit of a sense for some of the new capabilities uh, one last thing I'll show you before I sign off is that we can now not just boot from volume but we can actually boot the instance uh, from an image or volume snapshot in such a way that it creates a new volume in the process so almost like a clone cloning situation here so you can quickly uh, spin up a new instance that's just like the old one, but you keep the old one as well. So that's a nice capability, as well as availability zones. So as you set up your cloud in different regions, whether it's ge geographical or, or different parts of your data center, and you actually uh, configure availability zones, you want to have the end users have the ability to target those availability zones. And now they can do that right here in the dashboard. So with that, I'll just sign off and say, uh, again, I'm Mark Collier with the OpenStack Foundation, and I hope you have a good time with OpenStack.